Welcome to the PHC Esports Show. It's Friday afternoon, of course. There's a big match this weekend. We're here in Paris for a special reason. We've been joined by the EA, uh, by the Esports Fortnite team. They've joined us here in Paris, coming over from North America. It's a good time to connect with these guys. I'm here with Aaron, also known as Kirsch, and of course, Oliver. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. It's good to be here, yeah. Awesome. No worries. No worries. So how was the trip over? Well, we had a little um, flight delay, but it was good. It worked. It was good. Yeah, wasn't too bad, huh? No, yeah, not too bad. And where's that? Where's that? I'm here. The bin. We were fine. Yeah. After the first day, we feels like we belong here. You know. Yeah. No jet lag anymore. Okay, I'm good. good. And so today, what's your day been like so far in Paris? Have you been mostly playing? Have you been kind of sightseeing? What have you been up to? Um, well, we we toured the stadium stadium today. It's not for the first time. That was really cool. Uh, so it's kind of going around um, Paris, seeing all the the scenic stuff. And we saw the stadium today. It was really cool. Yeah, we saw Parc de Princess, Parc de Prince. Uh, a, a lot of our guys play soccer and football, so it was a really cool experience. Seeing the locker room, seeing the field, I got some uh, pictures. Paris yesterday, we saw Champs Elysees, Arc de Triomphe. So getting the full tourist experience. You guys are doing a lot then. You've been yeah. really busy. Yeah. yeah? Okay, so it's been an interesting time so far. You're happy to be here. The whole squad has joined you as well. Yep, that's right. everyone's here, yep. So, Aaron, if you could tell us a bit about the team, introduce the team to us on the stream. Um, tell us about some of the ambitions that the team has yeah. in the coming year. Yeah, so PSG TNA is the <clears throat> esports uh, organization in North America, focused on Fortnite for PSG esports. Uh, we came together about a year ago now, almost exactly. Uh, and it was, it launched at the same time as the PSG store in New York city and we were founded in New York city. So we were able to announce with the store there. And as I mentioned, uh, we're a competitive Fortnite team based in North America. Uh, historically, we've been the most successful practically in the world. We've won more championships than, than, than any organization with players representing us. Oliver, you know, being one of those players. Um, and yeah, so it, we're a top team. We're historically, as I said, rated the, the best. Um, and yeah, and ambitions going forward, this partnership that we have with PSG has obviously been great. It's one of the largest football soccer clubs in the world. It's expanded our reach. You get to have cool opportunities like this, I hope, for more in the future. We hope to keep representing PSG in the best way possible, winning land tournaments coming up, online tournaments coming up, signing new players, and representing PSG the best we can. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Very good. And Oliver, you were one of the first signings on the team. Is that right? Yeah, yeah the official one when it was in New York, yeah. So I was actually there when the store opened in New York, and mm -hmm. I guess I was there for the announcement as well. And uh, I would have asked you then, but again, now that you've been with the team for a bit longer, yeah, explain what it means to you to to represent the club, to have the badge on your chest. Uh, I think it's really cool, especially when the New York store launched at the same time as they were partnering with uh, when we were partnering with them, and just the collaboration. I think it's really cool to represent and back PSG just in the online space and in the esports space and. Still happy to be here and still going strong. So it's really cool to see. Very good. And was it important, do you think, for you guys to kind of connect the dots and come from North America, come from the States over to Paris? Yeah, for sure. Like, I, uh, it only strengthens the bond between one between the players. You know, we get to travel a lot. Uh, during COVID, there weren't a lot of tournaments in person. So now that COVID's winding down, uh, this has been one of the first opportunities to go international as a team. Also, just again, bridging the gap between esports and traditional sports like mm -hmm. soccer and football. And you know, we've recognized by fans even at at the football stadium. So oh, that's sick. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 great to bridge the gap between sports and culture. And the experiences like this are well, it's half the reason we do it. So there you go. What was that? Was that kind of uh, an interesting moment for you to to be there to have fans here? On this side, recognizing you. Um, oh no, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, they didn't recognize me directly. They recognized yeah, one of the players, they, uh, Blake. They said Blake and Oliver. Yeah, yeah. You go. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, recognizing us. They didn't want a photo with Blake, though. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was kind of funny. <laughs> well, next time, they'll get a photo. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Blake. Blake's over there, by the way. <laughs> we'll be here later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. cool. Um, so Oliver, tell me a bit about the uh, FNCS competitive system. Tell the fans as well, because. It's something new for me as well, so I'd like to hear about it. Uh, yeah, so on a base level, I guess um, there's tournaments every, big tournaments every um, uh, three months. Um, and at the end of the year, in, around October, they have the big land tournament. This year's going to be in Denmark, um, where players at the top level are trying to compete from regions all around the world um, to get flown out and competing on the stage, like land tournament in person. And it's kind of just like a football or soccer too, where 
players are just trying to compete at a high level, get signed to teams, and um, play for them, and try to just be the best, have uh, fans maybe watching from around the world, just moving up the rankings, but yeah. So h- how important is that? I mean, I think most people that will be watching this are aware how important it is to keep training at a consistent level, playing against pl- players that are at your level. Speak a bit about that. How important is that to actually have that on a daily basis to be to be competing at that level? Oh, yeah. Well, for me, I, I think it's very important to stay on top of your game and just competing at a high level. For me personally, playing about like 10 hours a day on average on the game just to keep up with my mechanics, skill, and just stay, stay in tune with the game. I think it's very important. 10 hours a day, no caffeine. Yeah. He said yeah. before. No caffeine, yeah. Jeez, 10 hours a day, he doesn't blink, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have any He's been doing it for three years, that's why he's yeah. like four years. Well, that's why you're here. That's why, yeah, that's why you're here. I guess, yeah. So, no, fair enough, okay. So, um, obviously, we have Kirsch, we have Oliver here, but we also have more other players here. So, I want to welcome these guys to come and join us as well. That's Kirsch. Great job. Hey, welcome, 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 welcome. Oof. Gonna go on the other side. Yeah, make yourselves comfortable. Make yourselves comfortable. Right. So actually, I think I think it's best if each of you kind of just takes a microphone for a second, um, say who you are, how long you've been with the squad, um, and then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, we can start from we can start from you. Cool. As you want, huh? I've been. My name's a uh, PSU teammate, Yumi. Yeah. I've been for the squad for about six months. I joined around the same time as me and Cool. Very good. Hello, my name is PSG TNA Blake. I joined PSG and TNA around a week ago. The newest signing. Yeah. Um, but I've been playing Fortnite, making like as professional um, since around 2019 and still going strong. Very good. Yeah, what's going on, everyone? My name is Jaith. Yeah, me and uh, Blake are the newest signings. Uh, so we signed just in time to come on this lovely trip. Um, but we're very, very happy to be here. I've been playing the game for about three years uh, competitively. I make a bunch of content as well. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Um, what's up, guys? My name is uh, PSG TNA Oliver. Uh, I've been with the team PSG TNA uh, since I first started in, in New York, as you might have heard earlier. Um, but I've been on TNA for um, well over, it might almost be three years now, two and a half years. Um, so I've been around for a while before this um, whole collaboration too. And I've been playing Fortnite for about over four years now too. Been, been around. Yeah, I'm PSC TNA Cool. Joined the team about six months ago with Yumi. Uh, I've been playing competitively for about two to three years. And uh, yeah, it's just, I'm grateful to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. So how's Paris treating you guys? We spoke a little bit off camera. You guys are saying the jet lag is not really getting to you anymore. You slept well last night. How was Paris treating you? Yeah, we we did a lot of exploring yesterday. So I think I hit about like 25,000 steps, which means like everyone did. <laughs> um, and we've had some really delicious meals so far. So that's been a, a big plus um, and a lot of, a lot of sightseeing. So um, is the food better here? The States, what are you saying? The food here is definitely different than the States, <laughs> but no, it's definitely, it's good. Like we went out to breakfast this morning before all the PSG stuff and it was great. Okay, cool. You went to the Parc des Princes, you were in the locker room, you walked around the stadium. Did you guys take photos? How was the experience for you guys? I heard from Oliver already how it was, but how was the experience for you guys as well? Yeah, we took lots of pictures. It was a lot of fun seeing all like the locker room, the field, everything. Yeah. And took lots of team pictures, solo pictures, all that. Nice. So you guys, obviously, Fortnite is the game. Uh, Aaron was saying, Kirsch was saying that you guys are also interested in football. Do you watch the matches as well, or do you play a bit of FIFA? Uh, is there some crossover? I know. No, strictly Fortnite. No, we don't play many other games. Yeah. Especially no FIFA. But I mean, I, I recently got a PS5. We play a little bit of FIFA. <laughs> I'm very good. Not that good, but it's fun. <laughs> Well, just play for a little bit of a break from Fortnite from time to time. Yeah, yeah sometimes we need a break sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fortnite, because we play all the time. Yeah. Slowly. I played a lot of, uh, well, soccer, football in uh, high school. Nice. So I've always had a love for the game. Um, and when I was very, very young, I was actually a huge Chelsea fan, but I stopped following them, and I've now, obviously, uh, become very invested in uh, in PSG, so... Uh, it's funny how that uh, turns out. That's cool. Okay, so Yumi and Cool, you two were playing together 
for a long time. Is that right? Yeah, we've been playing for over a year. Back in chapter two, um, yeah, we found each other and did really well first season playing, won grand finals, and yeah, we just been playing ever since. Okay, nice. We've uh, we've been friends for three years in the same like friend group for Fortnite. Right. And he was always a little better than me, and I always wanted to like get to his level to play so with him. were like competitive friends, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Once I got to his level, we ended up playing. I think like eight months ago yeah and then that was our best season and we ended up winning an a west nice okay oliver's telling me he plays around 10 hours a day is it roughly the same for you guys same amount of hours in the day no. it's definitely less for us because he streams okay yeah. so <laughs> he has to like make content so he definitely plays a lot more maybe than all of us but i play probably around like half that a day five, five hours for yeah around five hours or it depends on the day. Yeah, it depends on the day. Around five hours. Like school days, for me, school days, but weekends, obviously, I'm going to be grinding more, right. have more time. Yeah, it depends. Okay, and Jath, now, you're specialized in the Fortnite game mode named Zero Build, right? Yep. Explain to us the difference with that game mode. How is that different than, than the conventional, the classic game mode? Yeah, so that came out about a year ago, and it is pretty much what it sounds, so it's Zero Building. And, uh, so it kind of takes, like, you know, the traditional uh, reason of, of why Fortnite became so popular and they kind of just removed it. Uh, it was one of those things where the skill gap and people got so, so good at building that it actually became pretty refreshing to play a game where you didn't have to uh, maybe uh, try so much to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, and then they started to host tournaments for, uh, for it. And it, it kind of plays like other games, um, like other Battle Royale games, um, similar to how it's just a lot of positioning, a lot of aiming, and a lot of strategy. So Okay. Yeah. And in your time, you've gotten to be one of the, the better players in, in North America. Is that right? Right. So I actually, I started um, as uh, playing the normal build game mode and I was professional in that for a couple of years and I was kind of transitioning out of that and that's when the zero build mode came out. So it was really easy for me to just kind of hop on that and go all in on that while uh, most build pros still pl will play zero builds, but they'll do both. I've kind of just um, only invested in the in the zero build mode. So okay, got it. And Blake, um, you placed third in your first ever major Fortnite tournament. I did. Yeah. How did that start to to kick to kickstart your career? So that was in late 2019, I think around September, and it was the first ever FNCS, which is the Fortnite Champion Series. Yeah. And it was a trio game mode. Me and my teammates we were the underdogs. No one really knew us. We had like 100 followers on Twitter, like. We were kind of like irrelevant and so no one really expected us to do good and we just put in like six hours a day of practice Jeez. putting all the work we had to do and yeah. ended up coming third which was a big accomplishment and kind of resulted in the jump start of the, my career okay there you go i think we have the videos actually okay yeah as you can see on the screen yeah like this is your analysis <laughs> video the gritty can you hit the gritty no i, I <laughs> we can't even not at all we cut i just hit it yeah you can no, I just do it because I can't do it. No, but it's fine if you do it. Like, so you want me to do it right now? If you want to. Yeah. All right, bro. I'll, I'll hit a stream, bro. Yeah, let's do it. Ready for this? How do I know? You heard. You heard. No, I'm not ready. You heard. You heard. You heard. Ready. <laughs> ready. Let's go. And you said, we said, I was here to look to Fortnite. Stake to Fortnite. Wait, they have the clip of me doing it on stream, bro. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, that, I mean, okay, so we've spoken to you guys a little bit. We've got an idea of how many hours you guys put into it. Um, how do you manage to balance this lifestyle, being a pro Fortnite player, also with the other things you have to do? Some of you were mentioning school, responsibilities, staying healthy. What is that balance like for you guys? For me, I don't know about everyone else. Fortnite is like my main job. It's like a full-time job, so that's all my time. So I don't I go to college. I'm done with high school and I just stream and just it's all I do. Okay. So I, I see you have a few things. Cash cup. I have elite cup qualifiers. So there's a lot of different competitions that go into it as well. Is that right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. in between streaming, in between training, you also have to be ready for the competitions, right? Oh yeah. So how many competitions are kind of going on at the same time? 
Um, it kind of depends. Um, the official Fortnite tournament's probably about like three a week, and there's always two round cash cups and stuff. So you have to play opens for three hours, and then the next day is the finals for another three hours, where the that's where the cash is at. Um, but yeah, it's just like multiple different tournaments like that throughout the week, every week, yeah. um, throughout the three month season. Okay, so it's a three month season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is this period of year like? It's also must be kind of a, a stressful period of year. I mean, it's not really a period of year because it's three months at a time. So it's yeah, every exactly. three months. Yeah. yeah. There's, There's a month in a new season. Yeah, yeah. There's like a few gap weeks, like preseason, kind of just where it's a lot of practice. And then for about five weeks, it's like a lot of tournaments, um, FNCS, uh, F- Fortnite Championship Series, yeah. and a lot of like cash cups and stuff, um, all compact in like five weeks. And then it's another little break. Okay. Okay. And so you guys are all trained together. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not maybe not together, but you mean we'll definitely do because yeah, yeah, together. But Jade does his own zero build stuff, right? Uh, all I play with my own teammate. Yeah, we both have our own teammate. duos, so okay, we kind of do our own stuff, and we'll, we'll see. Play every night, yeah. Maybe. So if you do play together, is there is there someone in the group that's uh, a bit more distracted, that's kind of in the clouds, like off? I mean, Oliver's droning sometimes. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider me the drone here, but let's get in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't even know what the droning, what is that on? I mean, it just looks like in the clouds, you know, like you don't, uh, okay. you don't know what's going on, you're just like, I mean, if yeah, you're for 10 hours, that makes sense, so. Yeah, I guess after my stream, yeah, I'm a little bit of a drone, <laughs> a little, little out of it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the decision making in Fortnite. Um, talk to me about kind of the tactics that go into it, how important is decision making, I guess you have to make that decision, it's kind of, are you going off instinct or... How does it work? Because obviously in football, a lot of it is going off instinct. I mean, you have the idea in your head and then boom, you go off instinct. How does it work in in Fortnite in terms of decision making, things like that? Well, in Fortnite, it's like, it's a lot of RNG, like luck involved. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, take out a lot of the luck, you end up ending up in a good spot later in the game. Like Fortnite, you have to build it up. Yeah. Like if you mess up early on, it'll come back to you later on. Okay. So, so basically, before you start the game, do you, ha- do you have kind of an idea of what you want to do? Do you plan out your game yeah, yeah. before you actually start? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. there's a lot of factors that can happen going into a game that can mess up, mess you up, or whatever. There's a lot of chance involved. But uh, what makes the top players the top players are the ones that can limit that chance or prepare for all the possibilities that could happen. And just that's also part of the time in. So you kind of get used to like this could happen. We got to do this. Mm. If this happens, we got to do this. And also there's game plan planning ahead of time. So you're ready and knowing where you're going to go uh, to help yourself win the game. Uh, in the in the competitive, like in the competitive field, does everyone have how similar are the plans before you go into a match? Like, are you thinking oh, like, okay, I know at least three different people are going to be thinking the same exact thing and have the same exact plan I am, and it's just about who does it fastest or how does that work? So in Fortnite, like obviously there's a bunch of drop spots on the map. Yeah. So every team will choose their own drop spot. And for like a finals format, like a grand finals, big tournament, everyone knows where everyone's landing. So you'll know if there's one team landing on you or if you're uncontested, which means no one's landing on you. And your game plan kind of revolves around where on the map your spot is. So like if you're center of the map, you can base up early on a hill. Or if you're edge of the map, you have to know where to rotate to get into the center of the map, playing and follow the zone. Okay. When it shrinks, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you took the microphone when I was asking uh, kind of about the decision making and the planning going into it. Did you want to elaborate on that? Did you want to say something else on that? Um, yeah, there's a lot of decision making. And like you were saying, it's very like in the moment. Mm-hmm. So you're not, a lot of stuff that happens in Fortnite is very random. Yeah. Like he was saying, the RNG. So it's a lot of in the moment decision making. It's not some of the stuff you can't like expect to happen. Right. You just got to be ready for everything. And the more you like practice and scrim, you'll like learn how to avoid some of these situations you'll put yourself in based on your rotates and all that. And back to your question too about the top players and like, is this person thinking the same game plan as this person? Yeah. It At the top level, that's very, very close. But like rotates, like they're saying, like when you got to start moving because zones close in, you know, and you don't want to die to zone, so you got to keep moving. Like every second counts. So like if you rotate two seconds later after another team, that might cost you. So like the top players are all very good, but it's just like that a little thing, that little change can make the game difference. So, so a lot of it is adapting on the spot. Yeah, yeah, very small. Yeah. Oof. Like in Fortnite, you can never expect, like, what you expect is not going to really happen. Right. Like, the most random stuff will happen. Okay. Fat on the fly. It really is, yeah. It's adapt on the fly. Um, and then for you guys, so 
when you've adapted on the fly, right? So something happens, boom. How many times does X need to happen before you realize, okay, now I know how to avoid that situation in the future. Do you know what I mean? Because as you're saying, it, it's very dynamic. It changes on the spot. So when is it that you realize, okay, this has happened three times to me in this match, uh, in this game, or it's happened three times in the past three weeks. Now I, now I see it. Now I know. Yeah. You understand what I'm asking? Yeah, I know yeah. you think. Well, first you have to determine like how luck, how much luck was involved. All right. How much was it your fault, right? And you got to accept it. Most of the time it's going to be your fault or like at least there's something you could do, right? Right. So after you accept that, you could go into VODs or if you know what you did wrong, then you just know you got to apply the next game. Or you could go into replay mode, see, like, get a better view on what's going on, how you died, or what mistakes you made, and then apply to your next games and your next practices, for example, and then, yeah, just fix it. Okay, cool. So you two at the moment? Yeah, who we do? You, me, you guys are first place, and FN, uh, CS finish, finish qualified, um, sorry, in North Carolina, yeah? So you yeah. two were the, were the top duo in the top 50 uh for duos, we played, right? yeah we played in the land in north carolina we called because we got first in the mts uh before yeah okay how was it speak about that experience for us well it was our first land event so playing in front of a crowd it's a to totally different environment right before we're playing online in our room there's yeah. no one around no pressure yeah but now we're like there's a whole crowd in front of us it's like totally different so obviously it was new we had to adapt and um it was a little nerve-wracking but it was really fun playing against players from all around the world instead of like players in your region. Right. Okay. Uh, it was probably the funnest event I've ever been to. Yeah. Because of all the players from every region. Yeah. To meet new people, play with the people you've been playing with. Yeah. Online. But the hardest part is definitely the pressure, because there was a you were expected. Right. Right. Something good. And if you didn't perform, it was you still had a fun event. But if you don't want if you want to do better. Yeah. It just wasn't like that fun okay now obviously there's a lot of people there there's a lot of pressure because there's people around are there people that are heckling you at all or is it just kind of like letting you focus you understand what i mean are there people there around you kind of yelling at oh, you anything or? i don't know no there, we're like in our own space uh there's no one really like there's no third party like talking to us but it's just, we know there's a crowd in front of us. It's a big first land event, uh, like since COVID, right? Yeah. So there's many watching online. Yeah. It's just knowing that there's this many eyes watching you. That's, that's pressure. That's the pressure. That's the pressure. Yeah. No, I can understand. I mean, yeah. I, obviously for footballers, they have the, when they go from kind of the, the youth level to professional, those first games where they're playing in front of thousands of people, that changes for myself as a, as a host. It's okay when I'm sitting here and it's just cameras, as I was telling you before, it's just cameras. But well, as soon as we step into the stadium and there's 50,000 people, exactly, your eyes light up, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's a total, totally different mm -hmm. pressure. Um, how would you say that you handled it? Obviously, you guys performed quite well. Um, did you just kind of try and get yourself in a mindset of, oh, it's just like we're playing at home? or? Yeah, well... I feel like before the tournament actually started and we got in game, I was more nervous. Like yeah. once I sat down, loaded in and got in game, I feel like I was like more chill and like I knew what I was doing. Like I was like, I felt good. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think I was fine, but it's just before like going into it, walking into the stadium, that's like when I felt the most, like, like my heart was racing then. Like, but when I got in game, I was chilling. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yourself? I think we handled it pretty well. Yeah. Cause it was, it was a two day event. Yeah. And first day we got, I think top twelve, which is really good. In yeah. The top fifty lobby. But day two, like the little things happen, like plans change, everything. Mm. A lot of RNG was involved, and we uh, I think fell short to like thirty fifth, and then we ended up twenty fifth overall. Okay. Which is still pretty good. Yes, yeah, so solid. Okay. Yeah, still pretty good. Now, obviously, you guys talked about you were friends before, um, and then still our friends and then it was a bit of a competition for you to get up to his level do you think that's what make you guys such a good duo is that what makes yeah, your partnership so strong yeah definitely because we're like a very important aspect of like duos is like you got to be like be able to vibe and like okay. be friendly with your other teammate you don't want to be able to like, you don't want to be yelling at him right you right be, like really have good vibes so the fact that we known each other for like three years prior that really helped like we're just having fun at the same time while 
performing, right? We right. we can, we're comfortable with telling each other about our mistakes, and we're just really comfortable with each other to the point where like, like we're just playing really good, and we're just in the zone together. Got it. Yeah. You agree with that? Do you have anything? Yeah. Basically, you killed it, huh? Yeah. I want to want to speak to Jace a bit. Um, Jace, so I want to speak to 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 you about your training. Uh, we spoke mm-hmm. a little bit about um, the no build mode, but tell us. Um, is the training different from the other as you're not playing as it, from the other guys as you're not playing in the same game mode? Yeah, it's it's very different. It, it's definitely not as intense um, right now, at least. Uh, so in the build game mode, there's a lot more practice set up, um, and overall a lot higher level caliber players who who play both. So when there is no build tournaments, the the top caliber of of both modes will come and play it. Um, but it's it's a it's a lot of like producing content and kind of like trying to figure out strategies right now. So um, I'll stream the more the more casual mode, and and in my head I'm thinking of what I can do and how to apply it into a tournament. Um, but right now the the like the intense practice that that these guys do uh, is not really there for that mode yet. It's it's still a bit uh, young, but uh, with these huge tournaments coming up in the next couple of months, that'll probably change. Can I ask, uh, in terms of the the tips that you put online? Yeah, how in depth do you go? Like, <laughs> how many of your secrets do you give away? Because then you're kind of you're, you're making uh, the entries to Barry a bit less, and you have more and more competition. So, right. how does that work for you? Yeah, so I actually I've done a quite a bit of like tips and tricks type series on um, YouTube before. And that's like a thought I've had. It's like, you know, is it worth to grow my channel? But like, how many people actually know the strategy that I'm going to give away? Exactly. Um, so I was thinking in my head, like, hopefully, um, actually, once we get back from uh, this trip, we're going to San Diego for the first uh, qualifier. And so hopefully I can qual uh, top 10 is what you need to to go to grand finals. Hopefully I can get that out of the way. That way um, I can, you know, just immediately start creating tips and tricks content for that mode. Um, and obviously people would watch it a lot more if I was one of the top, uh, 10 duos to qualify. Uh, so hopefully I can, I can bang that out and then I can release all the secrets now that I've already made it. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about, uh, any, anything like that. Okay. Fair enough. So obviously a lot of, um, zero build tournaments have now just been announced. More events are coming out. Yeah. Uh, you just spoke about one. So your goal, is it to finish in the top 10? Do you have other goals for these tournaments? Yeah. I mean, I definitely you know, the sky's the limit. Like I'd love to go in there and win all three qualifiers and, and, you know, do my best in the grand finals. But I'd say like, you know, there's a lot, a lot of good, uh, talent and a lot of good players from all around the world that are going to these qualifiers. Um, so, you know, two top 10, uh, especially in the first or second one would be a big accomplishment and, you know, represent PSG TNA at, uh, the grand finals in, in Saudi Arabia. That would be an unreal experience. Two million dollar pass bill. The other finals, yeah. No, so there's a, there's a lot on the line. I'm here. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the you know, the ultimate goal is to make the grand finals. But if I can do it in style and do it early, that yeah. would be even better. Yeah. Okay, Blake. A few questions for you. So you've been one of the most consistent players in North America at the moment, um, competing at a high level since the game was released. How do you manage the uh, manage to co- consistently perform? even with map strategies constantly changing? Um, I don't know. I just, I've been playing Fortnite since it came out. Yeah. So I feel like I'm able to adapt to the new metas quickly, which is a big thing when new seasons come out, new items come out, you have to learn to like adapt to like what the new meta is. So how to play the game, Yeah. what to do in certain situations. And I feel like I've just been able to adapt to those pretty well for the most part. So there's been 16 FNCSs now. I've made 12 of them, yeah. which is a, really good ratio because not many people have made 12 out of 16 but yeah basically just adapting quick uh it's part of that kind of learning building on what you've learned in the past do you think okay this this new update is very similar to the one that came out three years ago uh are there is there kind of intricacies like this or i mean fortnite loves to throw random stuff at us okay so the most crazy items the most unnecessary changes but Adapting to those is what really will help you jump to the top. Okay, cool. Now, Jay spoke about his um, his content creation. You're also another content creator in the Fortnite world, um, but you're also mixing that with, with vlogs, lifestyle content. 
tell us about some of your future plans f- for the content you want to do. Yeah, so I plan to keep streaming and actually up my streaming hours once I get back from this trip. So you um, like all of it. Ten hours a day. All of it. I don't know if I'm gonna be like all of it, but definitely try to up what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, the servers for Fortnite, there was East Coast servers for North America, and now there was West Coast. And now they're combining them to Central. So right now I live in Virginia near DC for East Zero Ping, which is like where the servers are. So you get the best connection. Okay. So once I get back, I'm moving to Dallas to Central Zero Ping since they are combining. So that's I play. That's gonna be really motivating to create more content. There's gonna be lots of other pros living near me that I can make IRL content with, lifestyle content. Yeah, and yeah. So you have an advantage the closer you are to the. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. And now they just they just formed um, from east and west um, in North America to Central. So it's just all now North America. So they have EU over here, and yeah. then now North America for all of North America. So it's a bigger deal to be by the server now. Okay, and. Or- would you guys say, in your opinion, is there more talent in North America? Is there is the talent kind of spread evenly throughout the world? Is this is it stressed? It, I mean, no, it, it, it depends on uh, the region and how large it is. You know, kind of based off population stuff. But I definitely say um, um, Europe is probably um, a little bit higher than NA right now, for sure. They're done in scale. Like but, um, yeah. a, and he's a, a strong second, though, for sure. Okay, cool. All right, now uh, Sunday, you guys are at the Parc des Princes. What are you expecting? Yeah. What are you expecting? It's my first major football game. Yeah. So I'm definitely very excited. I go to a lot of sporting events in the U.S. Okay. And what I, type of sporting events do you go to? Uh, NFL, okay. NBA. Cool. So I feel like this is going to take all, like, blow all those out the park. Yeah. I've heard crazy things about European football. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's a big match, obviously. Yeah. In Liga. Um, Lyon is historically a, a very big team. and. Mm-hmm. It should, be, yeah. should be a game. It should be a, a good match, you know. So, Excited. and obviously we see you guys. Uh, we we have a a pre match show. Hmm. So if you guys are, are coming on to the show, I believe as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or maybe I just gave away a surprise. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. I think we were. Uh, something was mentioned about um, you know getting up and close during the warm ups. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. And when we were in the uh, stadium today. Just look at like being that close to the turf, yeah, and, or uh, the grass and it's carpet, no, looks yeah, like carpet. Mm-hmm. It just it just looks so nice. Like yeah. it really makes you want to just get out there and start kicking the ball around. Yeah, like it's uh it's gravitating. And yeah, the, oh yeah, I I agree. I think the game will be really cool to to see. I don't really get out much, so <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> seeing seeing uh, a football game at this level in person will be really cool with just all the players and everything. Just I think it'll be really cool. Very right. good experience. Well, that was it, guys. That was uh, that was the stream for today. We're here with the PSG TNA Fortnite squad. Thanks for coming over, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. us. No doubt, no doubt. We will see you uh, at the Parc des Princes on Sunday. That's all for now. David, the host, stayed. Thank you. Peace out. That's a comma and a comma and a comma, gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma, gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma.